Hello and welcome to the first installment of a video series we're putting together where we are going to attempt to educate security practitioners about the most useful analytical features of Microsoft's Enterprise Endpoint Security Platform, Defender for Endpoint. My name is Brian Donahue. I am a security specialist on the community team at Red Canary. I'm joined in this series by my colleague, Joe Savini. Joe is a solution specialist at Red Canary and the solution he specializes in, of course, is Defender for Endpoint. We're going to produce these videos in series of three. And each set of three is going to follow the same formula. So what we're going to do is we're going to run an atomic red team test. That test is going to generate a variety of telemetry and alerting and defender for endpoint. And then, then, and then in the first part of each series, we're going to go through those alerts and talk about how you can triage them. In the second part, we're going to talk about the response actions that are available for that alert within defender for endpoint. And then in the third installment, we are going to jump into the advanced hunting console, and we're going to talk about building Custo queries, which is the query language that Defender for Endpoint uses for searching through telemetry. And we'll also briefly touch on how you can use the uh, advanced hunting console API to stream raw telemetry out of Defender for Endpoint and into some other product. To be a little bit more concrete, I'd like to describe exactly what we're going to go through in the first trio of videos. So to start, I should explain what Atomic Red Team is. Atomic Red Team is an open source library of tests that security teams can use to validate detection coverage and visibility. The tests are aligned to MITRE attack techniques or sub-techniques, as the case may be, and they are, in essence, just very, very small behaviors uh, that represent what an adversary might do in an attack on a network. So for example, the test that we ran for the first set of videos is associated with a sub-technique of masquerading called rename system utilities. And what the test does is it takes PowerShell, moves it to the temp directory, renames it so that it appears to be notepad.exe, and then uses it to execute an obfuscated command. Now, the obfuscated command merely prints hello from PowerShell to the command terminal nothing overtly malicious. However, there is a lot of suspicious behaviors that are associated with that test, and many of them generated alerts in Defender for Endpoint. So to that point, in the first set of three videos, what we're gonna do in video one is we're gonna go through and triage those alerts and talk about what you want to look for within them. That's what this particular video is going to do. In the second, the next upcoming video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the response actions that are available within Defender for Endpoint and talk about how you can respond to a, an alert or an incident using the tool. And then in the third installment, we are going to jump into that advanced hunting console. So. That's how the series is going to go. We plan to produce as many of these sets of three videos as we feel is necessary to explore the most important features of Defender for Endpoint, right? Since, since a lot of these features are context dependent, their availability or their usefulness will depend on the test that we run. So at a minimum, we will probably do three sets of three videos, and then we may expand on from there, uh, pending feedback, of course, or if we think that there are features that we didn't explore that we want to. So without wasting any more time, I'm going to hand things off to my colleague, Joe Savini, and he's going to talk us through how we can triage and what to look for in alerts associated with a test for masquerading. So as, as Brian mentioned, we've already executed this test inside of the VM. And uh, this particular uh, Atomic Red Team test went ahead and renamed notepad.exe, or I'm sorry, renamed PowerShell to notepad.exe and copied it to a specific location. So Defender for Endpoint has built-in detection mechanisms to find this type of activity. And it's go ahead and it's, it's done that for us. And so we are in the primary alert view for Defender for Endpoint for this particular alert. Now, some of these alerts uh, are going to be correlated later into incidents, and that is done uh, in a temporal uh, analysis sort of way. So if multiple alerts happen on the same endpoint or if they are uh, similar to one another, Defender will go ahead and group them together intelligently for you and let you know that they may be related. Uh, and so that's a, that's a great way uh, that Defender adds that extra layer of value. So um, the first thing we want to do is scroll down here in the alert story. Now, the alert story uh, isn't to be confused with a device timeline. Those two exist separately. The alert story is more of the classic EDR uh, 
process tree view that you might be familiar with if you've used other EDR tools. And inside of our alert story, there's going to be several icons that detail the type of activity that has occurred. And then right where we start to find the alert content, there's these lightning bolts. So we see here a system executable has been renamed and launched. And uh, you know, Defender does a really good job of capturing a lot of the metadata associated with this type of activity. If we go ahead and drill in, we're going to find the time and the technique. Now, Brian mentioned these MITRE attack techniques are all mapped. Uh, we do a great job of, of mapping them and displaying them on our portal. But Microsoft also does a great job of making them single click away. If you need more information on a specific technique, you can just go ahead and open that. It'll actually link you right to the MITRE attack page where it gives you information about that technique. But for the purposes of this demo, what we're more interested in is what actually happened on this endpoint when we launched the Atomic Red Team test. So if we look down here, we see the notepad.exe binary uh, existing within this subsection of the alert, this, this puzzle piece here. And if we examine that more closely, uh, it actually includes the portable executable metadata for notepad.exe, which we recognize is actually PowerShell.exe in this case, because it has actually been copied into a different location, right? And so we can see this, the uh, signing information and other metadata associated with it. Uh, we can see that it belongs to this particular attack technique and that sort of thing. And the more we dive into the alert story, like into the uh, file create action, we're gonna get more and more detail on that particular uh, element. Now, keep in mind, when you see a different icon on the side here, that tends to mean that you're looking at a different, uh, at a different entity view. So this is a file entity view, right? And inside here, we're going to see virus total information, PE metadata information, and all of that. But then when we start to see the gear here, we're seeing a different entity view. And here we're actually cap copying the command line options. So this is particularly revealing in the case of this alert, because after it was copied, it was called with this base64 encoded command. And like many of you might be aware, you know, that's kind of a, a funky uh funky argument to be passing to notepad.exe, right? Um, you know, when we think about triage, uh, this is the basis, this forms the basis for, for how we would triage this type of, uh, of alert, right? Uh, Defender has provided us with a lot of valuable information here um, directly inside of the details view and the alert story view, uh, including the machine that's associated with, the user that it's associated with, a lot of information about the alert itself, including the techniques used, some information about the time, any associated incidents, some even some uh, basic remediation actions uh, or next steps, and uh, some other correlating incident details. Thanks, Joe, for walking us through those critical features that practitioners need to know about if they're triaging or investigating alerts in Defender for Endpoint, including things like the alert story, which kind of sensibly groups alerts or activity together on, on, the, on the analyst dashboard. And then maybe even more interestingly than that, um, the alerts themselves, which include information like, in this case, internal metadata, which revealed that that instance of notepad.exe actually had an internal file name of PowerShell and was in fact a renamed version of PowerShell, which is exactly what the Atomic Red Team test we ran was supposed to do. So I look forward to seeing you all in the next installment of this video series where we're going to use that same test and we're going to walk through the response actions that are available in Defender for Endpoint that uh, analysts and other security practitioners can use to bring an incident or a series of alerts toward a resolution. So thank you for watching.